So we've known for several years that, okay, we need to refresh the website. And at first it was, it was going to be a refresh and that's the level we were thinking of it as. And um, we uh, got a new director at the museum, Olga Viso, and I can't remember exactly when she started, but this, I think this does connect directly back to the reorganization and the ideas that she brought with her. Um, we created a online engagement, uh, audience engagement and communication department um, that our department is underneath now. And this is really that, that sort of synergy, that idea that it's online audience engagement. Um, and then just out of meetings organically, I believe it was our design director who pitched the initial idea. I said, what if we, what if we just become, and it, the first round was just a content aggregator because at that point we had no one who could produce content at the pace we would need, so we would just aggregate content. And from there, the next step was to say, okay, can we, can we get a, uh, a, a new position to be a web editor, produce content, help, help other departments produce content, and aggregate other content. And uh, that was sold up the chain and eventually the board was able to say, yes, this is a great idea. We, can, we should hire this person. And that was September that this final approval came and we launched in December. So in the meantime, you know, we're trying to build a plan B for the website to say, what if this doesn't happen? Can, we, can this work simply as an aggregator without our own content? And I think it, it doesn't. It, it wouldn't have been what it is. So we're really fortunate to have gotten that buy-in and uh, everyone on board and, and and give this a try, you know, it's, it's been extremely flattering that it's been so well received because it is sort of a, a new idea for us. But what's so special about it? Well, that's part of, part of what's special about it, is that it is now a website that looks like a website not necessarily connected to a physical visit to our museum. Uh, it does, it feels like a website that is part of the internet now, part of part of this ecosystem of, of good writing, good ideas, and we link to similar good ideas, good writing. Um, that's also been the, the battle that we've had internally where a lot of people were very comfortable with the brochure feeling of our old website, where it was very much about here's what, what the programs we're offering, uh, how do we attend them, et cetera. It was very much come see this, come do this at the physical building. Um, so the difference for us, and it's not a new idea in the world, it's not a new idea even across the industry, but I think for us as a contemporary art center to sort of say, let's, let's make that real online, be a contemporary art center online, is, is the new idea, to sort of be this hub of communications. That's how one of the ways we've been, we've been selling it. Um, and then just seeing if that, if that works, if, if we can exist in this online sort of playing field and, and continue to make people aware that we are a physical institution and there are gallery experiences and there are educational outreach things that, that do need to be experienced here. Um, so I think this is a really good step to sort of connect those two worlds. Uh, we haven't been live long enough, I think, to really make any strong conclusions as to is this working, what does that mean to work in this new model? Um, it feels right. I think we can start to see some, some good trends from the analytics, and I hope to be able to present some of that data soon, but we don't quite have it yet. We very much are trying to push the content creation back to the content creators so that it doesn't go through us. The web editor, at this point, our tool set isn't complete, so he does have to touch a lot more pieces than we want, and uh, we can do some cleanup if, if we need to. We have, um, it's sort of, I don't remember the exact actual title of another. One of our print editors is now sort of our digital editor as well. Um, so she is entering a lot of the content. We also have, for instance, you know, the, the film video program will be able to enter their own event information and one of the educators will be able to write their own articles. We don't have to do any of that work. It, the interface is built to allow them to create and maintain their own content online. And that's really, I mean, it's, that's the only sustainable way to do this is to let everyone make their own content. The web editor does have to go around and sort of shake various trees to say, okay, this blog is, is lying fallow. We need to really put something in it. Um, and that's, that's key. You know, it, people are, are writing anyway, but it, it is a workflow shift for them to say, oh, you know, I guess I can publish this online if I re, redo these bits of it. Um, and the whole, the whole workflow is, is evolving. What used to be 
what would start as a Word document for the print calendar and then end up online is now starting online. And it, it's still, there's still a Word document piece that I want to get rid of in there, but, <laughs> but it's one less document at this point. So this, the workflow enabled by thinking of publishing first and not whether it's web, not whether it's print, is a really big uh, step for us that we're not quite done with, but it's working. So our web editor, Paul Schmelzer, is a fantastic guy and worked at The Walker as the print magazine editor for years and years when I started there, he was there. He left to do, do online political writing, be an editor for some really great online entities. Um, and we were lucky enough to be able to bring him back for this project. So he's familiar with the Walker Art Center. He's familiar with our artists. He has personal connections with many of the departments. He's really an amazing fit for this position. And I don't know if it's still a one-person job if it wasn't Paul. Um, part of his job day to day, and he's just got this amazing aptitude for it, is he's connected and has you know Google alerts, RSS readers. He's constantly got his finger on the pulse of contemporary arts writing online. Um, so when something comes across his radar, and this is daily, he'll update this several times a day, an article will come across, and we've built this tool that he can basically plug in the URL, it will ingest the, the body of the page, the title of the page, he can write an excerpt to describe how it connects to our institution, and it'll go thumbnail. So we have this, this text, this corpus of text indexed on our site so we can sort of put it in context and connect it to the rest of our content. We never display it as if it was our content. We link back directly. There's no pass-through page. It's essentially, it's the internet. If someone wrote something good and we link to it. So we've had, there was, there were, I'm ashamed that there were even conversations about whether this was okay to do, but there were, and, and we quickly said, yes, this is okay, and we've had nothing but positive feedback from everyone that we've linked to. It's flattering, it's very much like, you wrote something good, we linked directly to something good, they love it. It's a, it's a perfect feedback, and it makes us, you know, a sort of a, it is that hub. We're a, trying to be sort of a one-stop shop for contemporary arts writing and thinking, and, um, you know, that's one of the stats we can see immediately, that people are arriving directly on our homepage from out of state in, in numbers we've never seen. I, I don't remember the numbers. It's not, it's not quite double the traffic, but it's an enormous increase of just landing on the homepage to see what's new. So this is, that's a big, you know, if that's our final goal, we're done. But it, I mean, there's more to do, but it's, it is working in the sense that people realize there is new fresh content here. It is turning over quickly enough that it's worth checking every day. We um, are about to do an internal survey I'm trying to collect these external stats. Has the usability changed for you know, our, our normal users, average users, but also internally, does this start to connect? Uh, are people consuming our own website differently? And, and I find myself, you know, whereas before, I'm like, I know what's on the homepage. I'm never going to go back, and now I do. What has Paul found today? So it's, if me as a case study, yes, that's very exciting. Um, so I, I suspect that it has changed. I can't measure it yet. I, I, would hope, I would hope that people are internally using it differently than ever and enjoying it. It's, it should be that uh, sort of serendipity of we're all sort of working and thinking on the same thing and, and it's sort of become a platform to share that even though it's mostly filtered through Paul's lens of the world. But it's interesting. I'm, I'm excited to find out what that survey says.